So when Apple dropped their lineup of MacBooks with the latest M3 chips back in November, I ordered the flagship model, the M3 Max MacBook Pro, only this time I decided to max it out completely, making this the single most expensive laptop I've ever purchased. The question is, was it worth it? Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what is up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. Look, this video is not going to be about specs. I won't be running any benchmark tests, and I'm not going to be timing 4K video exports. There's a ton of those videos already out there doing just that, and I'm sure you guys already know these things. I did a video about three months ago sharing my initial views on this laptop, and the single most frequent question I got from you guys was whether it's worth the investment. And I think it's the right question to ask. Yes, these machines are getting more and more powerful over time, but they're also getting exceedingly expensive to the point where investing in one of these is a serious financial decision. The M3 Max, which is the one I went for, and I'll explain why in a minute already has a pretty steep starting price at $31.99 but if you're gonna invest in a top tier model you're gonna want the non-bend version which is the 16 core CPU 40 core GPU and the 16 core neural engine besides if you want to max out the unified memory to 128 gigs you're gonna have to pick that configuration or you'll be capped at 96 gigs. But adding on that extra headroom of unified memory will cost you another $1,000. Now this is the first year I also maxed out the storage and that's for a very specific reason, which I will get back to in a minute. But adding the eight terabytes of storage will set you back another 2.2K don't need any of the software, which brings the grand total off this laptop to a whopping $6,899. Guys, that's a lot of money for a computer. Now, if you're based in Europe like I am, you're double screwed because the exact same configuration over here will run you 8,304 euros, which comes down to roughly $8,875. I mean, that is absolutely insane and by far the most I've ever spent on a computer. Now, I've been using this thing every single day for almost three months and I have some thoughts. Let's start with the design. I went for the space black option simply because it was new and I was happy to try something else for a change. I'm happy with my choice. I think it looks great, although I wouldn't really call it black, but more like a darker version of space gray. In terms of the fingerprints, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. My MacBook Air in the midnight color is an absolute fingerprint magnet, and if you want to keep it looking nice, you better stock up on microfiber. While the space black does smudge a little easier than the space gray or silver, it's not nearly as bad as the midnight, and it also doesn't show as much. So I don't feel the need to constantly be cleaning, which is nice. Same for the keyboard, it does show some fingerprints and grease on the keys, but to be honest, I only use the MacBook's keyboard when I'm traveling anyway. As soon as I'm in the office, 99% of the time, you'll find it in clamshell mode hooked up to a screen and peripherals. Speaking of traveling, I do travel quite a bit, and that is the reason why I chose the 14-inch MacBook Pro over the 16-inch. The extra screen real estate on the 16-inch is nice, especially for things like video editing, but I will gladly give that up in favor of a much more nimble, much more portable machine. The 16-inch is just too impractical for me. It's too big to use on the average airplane tray table, while the 14-inch sits just right. And that is one of the things I appreciate the most about this MacBook. I recently traveled to Las Vegas to attend CES, and it's so nice to have an absolute powerhouse of a machine that fits right into my smaller travel bag. And for a bit of editing on the road, the 14-inch will do just fine. When I get back, I'll hook it up to my studio display anyway, at which point the actual MacBook screen size becomes irrelevant. And of course, this MacBook is powerful enough to drive all the peripherals and accessories I keep at my main desk without breaking a sweat. Anyway, all this traveling is also the reason why this was the first time I maxed out the internal storage. I've always been an advocate of getting the storage you absolutely need and then using external SSDs for everything else. But I kind of came back on that for a couple of reasons. One is that I've lost way too many SSDs in my lifetime and losing footage is an absolute nightmare. You can't just fly back and film it again. Once it's gone, it's gone and so is your project. The second reason is that the internal storage on these MacBooks has become so incredibly fast that even the fastest external SSD is no match for it. This external SSD by Orico is insanely fast, as you can see here on the speed test, but compare this to the internal storage and you'll see what I mean. 
And this external SSD will cost you around $800 for two terabytes. So at that point, it's not that much cheaper anymore. The final reason why I maxed out the storage is that I was tired of having to offload one video project to another drive before I could start another one. Eight terabytes gives me more than enough space to work on multiple projects at the same time without having to worry about running out of space. So having a machine this powerful with internal storage this fast and having enough of it so I don't have to worry is just every editor's dream. My timeline runs buttery smooth, I don't need any proxies, and I've yet to see the first beach ball. Now I know that not everyone is into video editing, but you can take this information and apply it to your own work and your own needs. This just happens to be my main use case for this machine. Anyway, you hardly need to bring anything else with you, and that includes dongles because thankfully, Apple brought back the most important ports and the SD card reader a few models ago. Speaking of I.O., the M3 Max is a bit thicker and a bit bulkier than my M1 MacBook Pro, but I really don't care. If you want, then get a MacBook Air. On the Pro models, power is just more important to me. Just a little side note on the 14 inch here. I've seen reports, especially when these machines first launched, about the 14 inch overheating all the time because it doesn't have the heat dissipation the 16 inch offers. I'm sure those cases were real, but I can only speak from my own experience and I've not once had this thing overheat on me. And that includes editing heavy timelines and even gaming. But before we get into that, if you enjoy this type of content, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. I upload new videos every week, so plenty of fresh content coming your way. Anyway, this is the first time I've even entertained the idea of using my MacBook Pro as a gaming machine. It's no secret that Apple computers have historically been pretty useless for gaming, and most of the games that were available in the App Store were basically glorified mobile games. But with these new chips and architecture, it is actually possible to play some AAA games with pretty decent results. Baldur's Gate and Lies of P have been used a lot to showcase what the M3 Max can do in terms of gaming. And while they look incredible, and I do like Lies of P as a game, I was way more impressed when Death Stranding showed up in the App Store. And not only did it show up, it actually looks and plays incredible on this MacBook. This has to be one of the most unique games, both visually and in terms of storyline, and it's great that it's now available for these Macs. Now, does it replace my absolute beast of a gaming PC with the RTX 4090? Of course not, not even close. But to be able to just pop open my MacBook while traveling and playing some actual AAA games is a big win for me. Plus, it shows that Apple no longer just ignores gaming, and who knows what that means for the future. So has maxing out the M3 Max MacBook Pro been worth it? For me, the answer is yes. But it's important to keep in mind that this machine is my number one work tool. I use it to run my daytime business as well as this YouTube channel and to have a machine that I can blindly rely on that will be powerful and fast enough to handle anything I throw at it and that offers me enough storage to not have to worry about running out gives me a sense of security and peace of mind that makes this a worthwhile investment for me. Now, whether it's worth it for you, of course, depends on your needs and your workflow. And I know this is a cliche thing to say, but it's true. Anyway, I hope that sharing my considerations helps you a little bit in finding the right machine for you. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some links to videos you might also wanna watch.